Say hello to the octopus, Marco Codes! Hi folks, Marco here. Today we're going to talk about GraalVM. I wanted to make a tiny tutorial about how to use GraalVM to turn a Java application, a Spring Boot application, into a native executable. So if you compile the application on Windows, you get a Windows.exe file which only runs on Windows. Same if you did it on Linux and then get a Linux executable. Why would you want to do that? Well, to make use of all the accolades that people talk about online. First, uh, super fast startup times. Second, low memory footprint. Third, whatever people, you know, make up. What better application to use than the real world application? In this case, I'm going to use my Google Photos clone which I'm actively, by the way, developing here on this channel. So check out the series if, if you haven't yet. And just to show you what we're dealing with, it's a tiny Spring Boot web application, which scans in pictures I have somewhere on my hard drive. And then you see thumbnail pictures, nice little duplicated thumbnail pictures in this case. You can download them, you can also search for them, but that's it. Now let's see if we can turn this into a Linux executable. And just as a quick heads up, I tried to do this a couple of weeks ago and there were an insane amount of issues and I couldn't get it to work. Now it looks a bit more promising. I already did a tiny test run, so let's hope it works. Let's give it a go. Okay, let's start with the prerequisites. First off, you need to subscribe to this channel, otherwise GraalVM won't work. Second, I want to build a Linux executable, which I can run on my NAS, which I can also, you know, deploy to some cloud service. I'm on Windows, however, which means I need to make use of Windows's Windows subsystem for Linux called WSL. Essentially, I have an Ubuntu running here on my Windows machine, as you can see here. I also have my project checked out in IntelliJ IDEA. And as you can see here with that path, it also doesn't live on C, you know, dev, some Windows folder. Again, it's, you know, a WSL subfolder here. That is step number one. Step number two, I need to have GraalVM installed. As you can see here in the Spring Boot documentation, what they recommend you do is get sdkman.io. Yes, please follow the link and install it. It's simple. I don't want to handhold you doing that. And then I'll just copy that command here. So you can see I'm actually, I, I did these steps as well. It says using Java version 22, R17. What does that actually mean? Well, let's just quickly do a Java dash version and you'll see it's actually based on OpenJDK version 17. So Java 17 that is, but the GraalVM version is 22, right? Not the other way around or in case you were thinking I'm using Java 22. Now that we have GraalVM installed and that we have our project open up here in IntelliJ, there's just one tiny thing left to do because that Spring Boot documentation you just saw promised me if I just add this line here, the GraalVM build tools native plugin to my Gradle build, everything will work out of the box. What I can already tell you, and I'm just gonna quickly reload that project here. I tried this a couple of weeks ago with a, um, with a slightly different version of that plugin, which is being, you know, frequently released, deployed and whatever. And I couldn't figure out how to make, you know, my native compilation work. Turns out there was a bug in the plugin version. So make sure to use the latest one or at least double check online if someone, you know, encountered some issues with a very specific version. Actually, I just quickly uncommented the plugin version uh, once more because what I want to do is before we add the native compile stuff, I just want to run a Gradle W clean build to find out what are my compilation times like without trying to build a native executable. As you can see, uh, the build was successful in 14 seconds. We could make it statistically more relevant if we added 10 more, you know, runs or whatever. But, you know, 10 to 14 seconds somewhere along these lines is fine. Now I just commented in the line again. On the command line, what I'm going to do is I'm going to execute Gradle W native compile. That's all I need to do. And then let's see how long this takes. And hopefully I'm going to talk to you again in uh, a couple of minutes, maybe. Wow, we're done. Five minutes, eight seconds. That's an order of a magnitude slower, right? But um, well, who cares? Let's see what happened. Build native, native compile, and here is my Google Photos clone executable. Let's try and run it. Oh no, there was an error. Let's see what it is. It says, Hibernate building session factory reusing the reflection optimizer is not possible when the configured bytecode provider is none. 
use a different bytecode provider. I can spare you the details. It took me roughly, I don't know, half an hour or an hour to find out. The problem is the culprit is I'm using a very new Hibernate version, 6.3.1 final for one of my other videos here. And that Spring Boot version we're currently using is somewhat incompatible with it, right? Whenever we are doing an AOT compile. So we need to make sure to use the bundled, so to speak, Hibernate version and try the recompile again. See you in five minutes. Oh no, we're back already. Yeah, that's right, because it's not just, you know, the Hibernate version, but what actually happened is I need to change my API also because the new Hibernate version has some annotation processing capabilities and whatnot I'm using. And now in the old Hibernate version, they're not there anymore. And it just goes to show that it's not just maybe, you know, a specific version you're replacing, but you also have to change some code. So I'll just quickly do that behind the scenes now. All right, I just did the code changes, which took me about, I don't know, maybe half an hour because I had to revert all my stuff back to old APIs, right? And um, I'm just gonna trigger a new native compile. And yet again, I'm gonna see you back in five minutes, roughly. Hopefully it's gonna work then. All right, ah, here we go again. Four minutes, 49 seconds, right? Well, then let's give that a try and let's see if my Google Photos clone boots up, it does. Look at that, it took 0 0.168 seconds, which is pretty cool. Now, just to give you a quick heads up, a couple of weeks ago, reaching this stage, you know, took me, I don't know, five to 10 more recompiles. I had many issues along the way, as mentioned at the very beginning. For example, here in my application properties file, I'm using a specific Hibernate slash JPA naming strategy for the columns and tables. That wasn't picked up by default because it uses reflection. I think they have now changed something under the hood so it does get picked up automatically. Before that, I had to, you know, write, you know, custom stuff so my AOT processor uh, could actually understand what's going on here. And there was other stuff with Thyme Leaf. I don't actually re quite remember it anymore. But one thing I noted is that my application booted up quickly. The question is, does it still work? So let's open it up in a browser and refresh the page and I don't see any images here anymore. The question is why, and I'll just quickly, you know, have to, you know, re-enable a couple of log statements in here. So we'll hopefully find out what the problem is. Unfortunately, I have yet to recompile again. Five minutes later is the name of the game. So here we go again. I'm just gonna run it quickly. And now I do see a couple of exceptions. Let me just see what it says. It says, instantiation exception, uh, exif d0 directory, no such method exception, right? Now, let me tell you what the problem is. Back in my project, when I look at the initializer class, what we do on application startup is we walk the supply directory, we try to find images inside the directory, and then once we found an image, we try and extract metadata Right, watch the other episodes if you haven't already, what we do with that met metadata. The problem is there's a gazillion of different metadata classes and we don't know when we start up the application what specific image types slash metadata we will encounter. And that base metadata class in my image extraction library that are the one I'm using is called directory. When you have a look at directory, you can actually see that there's tons of subclasses, literally tons of subclasses for Panasonic, Photoshop directories, Adobe JPEG directories. And we need to tell GraalVM about every single directory that we have and that we want to end up in our final native executable. Otherwise, we'll get these, you know, error messages you just saw where it says, I don't know what an MP4 directory is. I don't know what a Pentax Makenot directory is. I don't even know what that is uh, by just, you know, looking at it. But you get the idea. And one of the ways of doing that is to implement a class. I call it my runtime hints. It implements runtime hints register. And in here you can say, hey, hints, I want to use reflection on a specific type. In this case, my exif ifd0 directory, which you saw in the stack trace, but I would have to put all the other directories here as well. And not just the directories, there's other classes which are needed as well. It's a huge time sink to get that up and running with, you know, the five minute, you know, compilation cycle. 
And also there's, you need to put in some member categories. For example, you just want to see the fields, do you want to see the public methods, the constructor, whatever. And you actually have to put all the categories here. I had to find that out painfully myself. But um, at the end of the day, then you have your My Runtime hints. And in the Spring Boot application, what you can do is you have an additional annotation. It's called Import Runtime Hints, uh, where you specify uh, the class you just implemented. And then hopefully everything works as expected. But I can't show you the final result here on my machine because I couldn't be bothered fixing up all these tiny problems and then waiting five minutes and five minutes and five minutes more. Sorry about that. I hope you understand. Now let's try and come up with a fair and balanced summary. First of all, the application boots up rather quickly, 0.13 seconds. Uh, the memory consumption is also nice, even though you haven't seen it. Uh, the problem is it doesn't work yet, right? And that has to do with my metadata extraction library. And I'm pretty sure I'd have to spend another hour or even longer, you know, to, you know, fix it up properly. That doesn't mean that GraalVM is a bad technology. I'm actually amazed at what it can do, you know, and that the whole AOT compilation process actually does work. However, if you just, you know, see the good, happy path tutorials online, you might be thinking, oh, let's just, you know, switch out a couple of, you know, plugins and everything works as expected. No, there is no free lunch. Think about if you really need it. My application, my Google Photos clone, it boots up, you know, with a normal JVM in roughly, I don't know, two seconds or so. And it runs on every operating system out there which has a JDK installed. Now I need to compile my tiny program for every, you know, target platform. I have quite the beefy desktop machine. Now it takes me five minutes to compile that tiny program, which took me like 11 or 14 seconds at the beginning, you know, to compile for my plain JVM. If I were using an online CI CD provider to build my project, they'd be super happy to have me as their paying customer because I'd need a strong machine to do the AOT compilation and the compilation times, as you saw, take a fair amount of time, but slightly less tongue in cheek. Have a look at your specific use case if it warrants, you know, the AOT compilation. And by the way, I'm not sure personally if, you know, going back to the good old CGI bin days of now we have an HTTP request, now we need to spin up a Lambda in my favorite cloud provider for every single request. And that's the reason why everything needs to be so super fast is a smart reason to go down that route. But then again, I don't know your specific project requirements. In any case, let me know if you have tried to convert your project to a GraalVM one uh, in the past or rather recently, what your experiences are. Let me know down in the comments below. Other than that, sayonara.